couple of quick announcements before I get going, guys. Um, I do want to tell you that uh, no podcast on Monday. It's uh, President's Day, and so I'll pick it up as normal on Tuesday. Also, Debbie's mom, um, Mitzi Sestero, has a birthday today. Happy birthday, Mitzi! <laughs> And um, also want to mention, I've been having a lot of fun on uh, Truth Social. Um, I've been doing part of the beta testing, and I caught seems to have caught a tiny glitch, but it's all fixed now. And so it's nice to see this coming along beautifully. And it's, a, I'm told, going to be going live uh, sooner than than expected. All right, I want to talk about the um, the midterms, and we don't want to be complacent about the midterms. And of course, the Democrats have shown that they know how to manage the election better than we do. Uh, we might be better at campaigning. They're better at election management. And I think you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Nevertheless, this is not a time, by the way, to sit home and to wallow in despair. The opposite is true. There's tremendous opportunity. And it's time to, well, politically speaking, metaphorically speaking, stick a fork in Biden. Yes, right in the buttocks. And I think if we do this effectively, he, I mean, he's not even going to be able to go. Come on, man. He's going to be like, get on, man. So the issues are lining up on our side. So I'm going to talk about what are the little sharp ends of that, of that fork. Well, the first one is um, law and order, safety. The Democrats came up with um, defund the police. They're trying to run away from it. Oh, we, ne we never said defund the police. Well, yes, you did. It was, wasn't just the squad. It wasn't just AOC and Ilhan Omar. The mainstream of the Democratic Party embraced the slogan. Many police departments were defunded, if not demoralized. That is issue number one. I think it's a powerful issue for Republicans in the midterm. Number two, China. Now, foreign policy is not often a big issue, but kind of selling your soul to China is. And I think what we have with the Bidens is being compromised by China, making deals with China that result in transfers of assets under the table to the Biden family. I think that's a powerful issue. And then that is then reinforced by the fact that Biden's taken a very soft view toward China. Notice he's rattling the war drums about uh, Russia, but a far more dangerous power today, China, is being is really being coddled. Um, the Olympics are kind of a good example. The United States has a symbolic or diplomatic boycott, but no, all our athletes are there at the Olympics. So this was a kind of a ineffective sanction, if you can even call it that. Immigration. Wow, we've seen um, the highest number of illegal border crossings in history. Almost um, uh, 2 million arrests made this year alone. Wow. So this is Biden essentially just yanking open the gates at the border and letting people in. And the change from Trump couldn't be more stark. And the political opportunism of this couldn't be more grotesque. And then inflation. That's the pocketbook. And we're talking about inflation that's driven by Biden's big spending. It's also driven by the promiscuous uh, monetary expansion of the Biden Fed. And um, no wonder we're seeing inflation now, six, seven, now seven and a half percent, the latest numbers. Uh, gas prices are at a high, and that's not just because of generic inflation, because generic inflation would seem to fall pretty evenly across the board. But no, Biden has blocked new natural gas and oil permits on federal lands. He stopped the construction of the Keystone Pipeline. So you put all of that together and you can see why we've seen such a soar in energy and gas prices. And finally, schools. The uh, leftist enthusiasm for continuing shutdowns, for unreasonable mask mandates, uh, and for uh, the um, sanction of open racial indoctrination, open trans indoctrination in the schools. And parents are realizing they've lost control, not just lost control of the schools, but lost control of the schools to left-wing radicals who essentially are turning the children against their parents, who are, who are attacking the values of the parents and who are polluting the children's minds at a time when their minds aren't fully developed, they don't have the full skills of critical thinking. They're subject to this, this um, uh, left-wing indoctrination. So parents want to take back the schools. Let's call it make the public schools great again. And if we put these issues together, we have a powerful formula for really letting these guys have it in November. 
uh, and showing them that their effort to sort of transform America in this way and to create on top of it a one-party state, well, the American people are not okay with that.